welcome to the Chatham Kent Community Athletic Complex for a great day of football here as we get ready for the Pee Wee Constellation final. The Black Goose Grill Cougars are going to be taking on the Campbell Toyota Cougars here and uh, have a great day and uh, joined alongside here with my, my partner Jim Redman who is the uh, the organizer of uh, all of these amazing football teams that we're going to see this afternoon. Uh, this is our uh, Pee Wee Consolation final. Um, they, they played Wednesday night to, for the right to play in the final uh, coming up after this game. Um, lots of uh, lots of returning football players uh, to our organization and uh, lots of new ones too. And here we go with the uh, Black Goose Girl Cougars kicking off. And it looks like number 50 falling on that kickoff there as the Campbell Toyota Cougars will have very good field position. And uh, I should probably introduce myself. My name is Cheryl Johnstone from Country 929 CFCO. I'm so used to having a pre-recorded intro. I don't usually have to introduce myself. As we get this uh, football game underway here, some good field position. And uh, of course the Campbell Toyota Cougars are in the white jerseys and the Black Goose Grill Cougars are in maroon. So we head up to the line of scrimmage here and get the handoff and a good rush here by one of the running backs. Number, hard to see his number here, number 45 it looks like. Nice simple dive play to uh, Connor Wright. Now you've been watching these, uh, these players all year long. What are you expecting out of this game here? Uh, you know what, expecting uh, lots of good blocking, lots of good tackling, um, and ball control. Um, I think uh, the uh, the uh, Campbell Toyota team is uh, a ball control team. They'll get four or five yards uh, a game. Number 14 bouncing out there to the side. That's uh, Connor Vanderheesh. Good run up the middle there. It looks like it's good enough for a first down. Hey, they typically... Uh, you know, take their time, move the sticks. Um, the uh, Black Goose girl has some pretty explosive players. Uh, uh, Jonathan Cartier, Johnny Cartier, number 66, is uh, is something to watch. He's a pretty good football player. I say, well, it uh, might be tough to uh, to throw the ball today here because it's uh, a little bit breezy here at the uh, Chatham County Community Athletic Complex. As we pass the ball off here for another running play right up the gut this time, and the uh, the whole pack is moving there. Finally able to uh, bring him down, but not before uh, gaining him probably about seven yards there on that rush. And that was Connor Wright again. And Connor Wright is up to off to a, a great start so far here. With a couple of good rushes right up the gut, so we have second down and three yards to go. Cougars head to the line of scrimmage. Campbell Toyota Cougars heading to the line of, line of scrimmage. We've got two players in the backfield, one under center. You know, the run this time out to the left side. Breaks a couple tackles before he's finally brought down there. Good enough for a first down and a pretty good gain. That'll be uh, number 42, Connor Wright once again. Apparently he is their go-to running back there. Yeah, they, have, they uh, do... Uh Running back by committee, uh, a lot of running backs, uh, Cameron Cregan, uh, Connor Wright, uh, Connor Van Heesh, uh, and amongst others. They're, they will usually run four or five kids, but he's a pretty good go-to kid. As Campbell Trader heads back up to the line of scrimmage, two running backs in the backfield once again. And this time the quarterback keeps it, number 10 keeps it. And runs for the first down and a big gain here before he's finally brought down out of bounds there with a big tackle. Number 10, Ethan Jordan, the quarterback there with a nice little quarterback keeper sweeping him to the outside. And he kind of hit that, hit that ball on his back hip and he's small enough he kind of got lost in the offensive line and, and took off to the outside. Well, after having so many of those plays right up the gut there, it was a bit of a trick play then to throw everybody off. Yeah, that was good play calling, very good play calling. So another first down here for the Campbell Toyota Cougars. They head back up to the line of scrimmage. Hand it off this time to number 14. That'd be Condor Vanderheesh. And uh, unfortunately, he's uh, stopped pretty quickly there at the line of scrimmage. Nick to gain. Any ground it looked like on that one may have actually lost a yard. 
couple of the the uh, better tacklers on the Black Goose, uh, Goose Grill, uh, Connor Roebuck and uh, uh, McFadden, uh, Braden McFadden, uh, made that tackle. It, the two of them have great form. We pass it off to number 14 again, who uh, bounces out to the outside. Breaks a few tackles there before he's finally brought down. Connor Vanderheesh once again with the big run there. Stays close to a first down. Looks like they're going to be about three yards short here. So third and three yards to go. The Campbell Toyota Cougars are uh, driving right up the field here, almost at will, it seems like, but first time that they're going to have a real challenge here with a third down. And another handoff right up the gut. As the pile kind of scrimmages around. And finally brought down. We'll see where the officials mark it. It's a lot of bodies in there. There was a lot of bodies <laughs> in there. <laughs> You know what they're doing? What the uh, their coaches are telling them: go for, go after the ball, bring them down, and uh, you know doing so safely. Great to see kids here learning, you know, proper tackling techniques, all that as they uh, as they move forward with their football careers. And that's something we ask our coaches to focus on. We ask them to focus on fundamentals, blocking, tackling. That's uh, an important. At this age, it's an important part of the game. So we got another quarterback keeper here by number ten, the small quarterback. Gains a few yards before he's finally tackled out of bounds and then drops the ball there. But I believe he was already down. So nice little run around uh, the edge there by number 10, the quarterback Ethan Jordan for the Campbell Toyota Cougars. Well, we snuck, we snuck the sidelines in this year about 10 yards uh, either side. So we play in a fairly narrow field. Uh, we don't play in a regulation field, regulation length, but the width is 20 yards uh, narrower. And it promotes more contact, uh, a lot more close contact, and um, and I, I like it. It uh, becomes a ball control game versus mm -hmm. sprint to the outside and go. Yes, as I say, probably makes a big difference too. You don't get, have to worry about those uh, open field helmet to helmet tackles as quite as much. No, it keeps uh, keeps it nice and close, and everybody gets involved. Oh, we got a nice little trickery play here as uh, the quarterback keeps it and then finally hands it off. Just short, Look, getting very close, getting the first down, but uh, just short of a touchdown. So now we're going to be first in goal here as Campbell Toyota is rushing down the field here. A few substitutions for the Black Gro Goose Grill Cougars. That was Everett Parker on the run. He's got lots of speed. He's a very quick kid. I'm saying uh, speed will play a big factor in this type of game. This will be a quarterback sneak. Looks like it, and we have a touchdown. A touchdown for the Campbell Toyota Cougars. Uh, so early on, that's six points for the Campbell Toyota. Nothing for the Black Goose Girl Cougars who have yet to get the ball on offense. And they sub a, sub a larger larger quarterback in, so Cameron Cregan comes in to take that snap and, and pull, pulls it into the end zone. And then he gets to stay out and kick the extra point. Oh, nice. Bit of a reward for him then. <laughs> a bit of a low snap, tumbled in there, but still able to get it down. And that's good for the nice extra kick. point. So Campbell Toyota able to get on the board here on their very first drive on offense. And uh, now we'll get an opportunity to see the Black Goose Grill Cougars and their offense take the field. And um, any players that we should be uh, looking for on their offense for the Black Goose Grill Cougars? Uh, they had uh, uh, Johnny Cartier playing quarterback, number 66. Um, I would expect that uh, uh, Braden Fisher will line up in the back backfield uh, at some point uh, today as well, number 59. Um, they also run uh, a couple other uh, a couple other backs uh, as well. Um, Tate O'Leary uh, will often run the ball. Um, sometimes uh, Braden McFadden will run the ball, and Isaiah Caldwell too. 
I say it'll be uh, interesting to see how the uh, black girl, black goose girl cougars do as uh, they lost the semifinal only by one point. So a very close loss for them. So it'll be interesting to see their offense take the field and what they can do with the ball as Campbell Toyota prepares to kick off. And a good oh, kick that's fumbling a live ball. down. And Campbell Toyota almost recover that number 12 there, but Black Go Goose Grill Cougars were able to uh, fall on that. And they'll get the ball first here on offense. Pretty good position, 45 yard field line as uh, we'll start to uh, march down the field. Yeah, typically this offense is, uh, is a lot more explosive uh, than the Campbell Toyota offense. Campbell Toyota offense is, uh, they just chew you up as they move down the field. Uh, this, uh, this offense can be quite explosive. So we can expect maybe to see some uh, some more throwing, more uh, big runs. Runs to the outside, yep. As we have two running backs in the backfield here. Hand it off to one of them. Number 55, Tate O'Leary, uh, I believe. Oh, that was Camden Fisher. Camden Fisher. We've had a number of the number of the Fisher kids through the program, including uh, Camden's sister Brett. She's played football uh, in the past. It's really nice to see them uh, keeping in the family, and of course, you come out and watch one sibling play, and the rest yeah. of them want to get in on the action yeah. too once they head out. Once again, two running backs in the backfield, and we have a flag down on the field. Let's see what the call is. Maybe it looked like the defense moved first. Yes, appears to be offside on the Campbell Toyota Cougars. So they'll be moving the ball up here five yards. And giving uh, the Black Goose Girl Cougars some uh, some good field advantage, um, good uh, field position here, and uh, only have to get five yards to get that first down here. Makes it a short field for them. Mm -hmm. Black Goose heads to the line of scrimmage. Two running backs in the backfield once again. So get a hand it off once again, but. Tackled there pretty early at the line of scrimmage. It was Isaiah Caldwell that ran the ball on that play. And uh, Johnny Cartier had uh, lined up under center as quarterback. So, so not able to make it too far on that, but uh, with that, thanks to that penalty, still only have about five yards to go. Looks like a little bit of confusion here on the uh, Black Goose side of the ball, but able to uh, snap the ball. They got two running backs back there. And it looks like no gain once again here for the Black Goose Grill Cougars as uh, Campbell Toyota's defense looking pretty good. Getting some penetration there at the line of scrimmage, able to take him down pretty quickly. Doing a good job shutting him down. The Black Goose Grill offensive line needs to maybe fire off that ball a little more. And open some holes. Mm -hmm. The uh, defensive line for Campbell Toyota seems to be uh, seems to be plugging the holes quite well. So as we have a third down and five to go, two running backs in the backfield once again. Looks like we might have a throw on this one, and just overthrowing the quarterback, number 66, Jonathan Cartier, just overthrowing their wide receiver there, just missing out. I believe that was. I think that was Nolan Johnson he was throwing to. It's tough. It's a pretty tough throw to make uh, when he had two two uh, defenders sitting right in front of him and mm -hmm. had to wheel that ball on the run. It's a pretty good th pretty good throw it for great sixer. <laughs> Mi missed him by uh, a few steps there, but uh, still a pretty good throw. So hopefully that doesn't deter them now as it's uh, fourth down and five. So we see if the uh, Black Goose Girl Cougars will be. Uh, Attempting to go for it, or if they're gonna to kick the ball off, and it looks like they're gonna. Looks like they're going to. Uh, 
as they snap the ball. Flag is down, though. Let's see what the officials have to say about this one. So they're picking the flags up, and they'll just be replaying the snap here. Not quite sure what happened there. Looks like maybe they snapped the ball a little bit too early before the officials were set to go. Now one official's over there talking to one of the coaches from Camel Toyota explaining exactly what happened. And now you uh, have the official throwing a flag out on the field. See what he has to say about this whole situation. Calling it on the defense. Going to be an automatic first down. I think they called that one on the bench. There must have been a must have been a slight disagreement between Coach Cregan and Coach Carroll and uh, and referee Mike Tatsu. So, see, well, he threw the the flag right over by their bench there, so they must have said something he did not agree with. Or is not allowed. Uh, but that's good news for uh, Black Goose Grill as they get a first down out of it. And uh, moving ahead, another 10 yards here. Well, they had him stopped, and they had him on fourth down, and uh, Look like and they were the penalty. To pull a fake punt there too. It even. did look like a fake punt was was in the works. They're probably too they're probably too far away from the end zone to uh, to look for a rouge. And that's the end of the first quarter here. Although it looks like they will let them finish running this one play before they switch ends. So they pass it off, bit of a trickery here with some fake handoffs. Getting a number of yards out of that. And as you may have heard there, it looks like they uh, there was a bit of a fumble, recovered the ball. Uh, Connor Hines made the initial hit uh, at, at the line of scrimmage and uh, slowed Camden Fisher up just enough so others could come in. And I, I never did see who came out with the ball. There I'm not sure exactly. Two or three white bodies on the, uh, on the ball there, white players on the ball, and uh, I couldn't tell who came up with that ball. Say it's uh, kind of hard to tell. There was a bit of trickery. Snap the ball, handoff, a fake handoff. Finally, someone took off with it there. So a bit of a crazy play to end the first quarter. On a reverse, on a reverse, a reverse like that, it really is uh, about timing. So I think, I think the idea was that Camden Fisher was going to hand that ball off, but uh, uh, the uh, player he was handing the ball off to was almost all the way past him by the time mm -hmm. he uh, he looked up. So. It was, was a good play, just uh, just needed to hang on to the ball. Well, and it looks like the uh, Campbell Toyota Cougars came up with the fumble that first time around, but now there's uh, another fumble here as the Black Goose Girl Cougars recover, take the ball down. So now they're going to have fantastic field position, getting the ball back there because they had fumbled it. The other team recovered. And then they fumbled, and they got it back here to start the, f the second quarter. Yeah, Caden, Caden Fields picked that ball up. I, th I think that handoff uh, was uh, meant for Connor Van Heesh, but uh, for some reason he didn't uh, – I don't think he thought it was coming to him. <laughs> he didn't uh, didn't have his hands ready, or uh, and uh, uh, Ethan Jordan put that ball in the, in the bread basket, but he wasn't ready for it. So sometimes it can be uh, – it's maybe tough out there to, to hear some of the play calls that are coming in and – yeah, I think balls meant for you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's hard, and uh, th these guys run for grade five and six. Uh, they run some uh, some pretty complicated football sometimes, and and uh, it's easy to forget an assignment. So first and ten here for the Black Goose Girl Cougars as they hand the ball off here to number thirty four, who runs it up the gut, Mr. Uh, Brady McFadden. A good gain for him. As it looks like they'll be moving the sticks about four or five yards here. So we'll have second down and five. 
just over 10 minutes to go here in the second quarter. It's been an entertaining football game so far. We've had some fake punts. We've had some fumbles. Yeah. Some good hitting, and I, I like the, I like the ball control. Um, I think that's a it's an important part of minor football. Uh, you know, we're trying to teach the kids fundamentals. We're not asking them to be NFL stars or CFL stars. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just looking them to looking for them to uh, learn fundamental football. And uh, you know what? It's been a, it's so far these teams have showed themselves quite well. So we have a flag on the field here. It looks like it was a false start on Black Goose Grill. So they'll be moving back another five yards here. I'm trying that one again. It's so very important, of course, for the, the kids to learn these sort of fundamentals at a younger age. Because as they you know, continue going on and continuing on with their football careers, then, then you can focus on the more elaborate you know, plays and catches and positions, but uh, you know, this is uh, the time where they, they need to learn how to tackle properly. Yeah, it should be simple football. Um, we stress that to the coaches that uh, we like to see it as uh, simple as possible. And really, uh, the better you tackle and the better you block, the, the better you play. Says so we have number 88 here going out all the way to the outside on the far side of the field with a great run. That'd be Caden Fields with a great run. Looks like it'll be good enough for a first down. Just short, just short of a touchdown. But it'll get enough for a first down and they'll get a brand new set of downs, a chance to uh, score a touchdown here. Well, they're right on the, right on the threshold. All we need to do is hold onto the ball. Mm -hmm. Again, so hold ball onto the ball. Security is uh, a big, big factor at this uh, this level of football, uh, really any level of football. I look for Camden Fisher to get that ball, and there he is. And a nice and run. And he rumbles in there for the touchdown. He's a big, big, powerful kid. Tough to tough to stop and uh, certain. Especially at the goal line. <laughs> yeah, and especially at the numbers. He's uh, He's a lad that you got to get you got to get low on to to tackle. And uh, good form will get you there. But uh, yeah, he's a powerful, powerful runner. I say, and it gets the Black Goose Grill Cougars on the board with six points. To see them come out. And uh, is this a team that's more into kicking, or do they prefer to go for the uh, two point conversions? Uh, they have they have kicked in the past. Um, they may uh, they may try for a single. Looks like they're going to be going for two points here. They've got uh, a couple of players in the backfield here. Oh, wait, no. Now we're getting down to kick. Oh, and it's a fake. <laughs> it's a fake <laughs> field goal attempt. Fake extra point as uh, number 88 Camden Fields runs that in for two points. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> it appeared to be, appeared to be a hodgepodge. Mm -hmm. Two wing backs and a, and a holder and and. and uh, Jonathan Cartier uh, uh, appeared to look to kick it, and and then uh, we had quite a change. It was uh, a bit of a strange play there, to say that the was. least. They're going down. It was like thought they were going to try to run it in or throw it in. Then it looks like they're going to kick it and then change their mind once again. They got everybody confused, I think, with that play, which um, you know sometimes works out well, and I'm yep. sure it was fun for the kids to run that one, too. We uh, we actually and we sent the teams at, at the minor level to to kick uh, extra. Well, I shouldn't say extra points. I should just say converts because we actually give two points for a kick and one point if you run it in. Um, a little bit uh, backwards to what they mm -hmm. do in the in the uh, pro leagues, but um, it yeah it really incents them to to play football and uh, and try and kick. Mm -hmm. uh, Kicking is an important part of the game. Yeah, definitely. As you can see here on this kickoff with this uh, really kind of squirrely, squirrely kick, and it uh, looks like we have a flag down the field because I don't believe that ball went 10 yards. I don't think it did either. <laughs> it looked like it was going to, and then all of a sudden it <laughs> had a little spin on it and kind of went backwards. Yeah, it went six and <laughs> ended up four. <laughs> it looked like it was going to make it, but then not so much. So what will they do in this situation? Will they re-kick it or...? Most of the teams will take the ball. Uh, will take the ball. Uh, a lot of times, they'll, it'll be at the at the forty. Um, I I like seeing them. I like watching them kick it again. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's an exciting part of the game. So um, well, definitely, you're just talking about trying to develop that 
that kicking game and kicking field goals and kickoffs. Yeah. So anything that will present them with a challenge is always a good thing. And, you know, yeah. they have to learn to kick, but it looks like uh, they'll just be taking the ball here. Yeah, so they get it where, where the ball went dead. And oh. The further spot the kick went. Like Tatsu <laughs> moving the chains closer together. <laughs> So we have a timeout here for Campbell Toyota. So we probably want to discuss the, with uh, just over eight minutes left in the game, discuss maybe their strategy here to uh, march a little bit more down the field, give them a chance. And they, if if they hold the form and if they keep moving the ball uh, in uh, in four and five yards a pop, it, it'll probably take six minutes uh, off the clock to uh, if they want to reach the end zone. It, which is great, and that's that's part of their game. Uh, ball control is a big part of it, and uh, and working the clock. Say so as the uh, teams head back out here to the line of scrimmage after talking with their coaches, maybe discussing the game plan a little bit. Looks like they're still not 100% yeah, sure. Still, <laughs> still discussing it. So we've had we've had a first this year for for Cougar football, um, particularly at the minor level. Uh, Beth Fisher uh, is uh, helping coach uh, helping coach the uh, Black Goose Girl Girl team, which is uh, of course from Wallaceburg, and uh, I think she's our first female coach, uh, football coach in the organization, and uh, awfully glad to have her. So well, of course, it's always exciting to uh, to see women getting involved with uh, with sports especially with, uh, you know, football, something that you might see a lot of dads out helping out with, maybe not so much the yeah. moms. So. Yeah, you don't, see, you don't see a lot of moms out uh, coaching, but uh, she's had uh, a lot of kids uh, roll through football, some uh, real good football players uh, in her family, and uh, she picked up uh, a lot about the game. I had heard that she had even played a little when she was, uh, she was younger, so um, it's great to have her. As the officials bring the chains out here to measure to see if, the Campbell Toyota Cougars were able to get to a first down. It looks like it's going to be close, but it's a first down here there for the Campbell Toyota Cougars. They get a fresh set of downs. And yeah, we've been lucky to to have a pretty successful program in in Wallaceburg. Uh, we have uh, teams in all all divisions in Bantam, Pee Wee, and Tyke. Uh, have had for for the past four years, um, and uh, Wallaceburg has been really big supporters of uh, of Cougar football. A lot of Wallaceburg kids playing on the in the travel program mm -hmm. in our in our spring summer football as well. So it's uh, it's nice to see uh, Vic O'Leary uh, stepped up and uh, and uh, to coach this uh, Pee Wee team has done a great job. So yeah, and I think you can see the success of that with uh, the number of players that are now playing at the high school level and. Um, of course, Wallaceburg winning uh, the Kent Championship this year. So big congratulations going out to them, to the Tartans, for getting that big win. And I think a lot of those kids probably made their way up through this program here. Yeah, a number of them uh, would have been on the front end of it. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to junior football uh, at the high school level this year. That'll be, that'll be the uh, first set of uh, kids that have spent four years in the minor program uh, and uh, and uh, same number of years in travel. Uh, graduating into junior football, and uh, I uh, would expect the level of football will be quite high. And I'm sure the coaches love it too, because then once uh, once the kids get there, they don't have to be teaching them the fundamentals. They already know it from you, thanks to you guys and all the great coaches and the dedicated coaches here in the Cougars organization. See, so as Campbell Toyota gets a nice run here, they just had a fresh set of downs. Look like Tyler Shemansky running the ball. Tyler's actually Pee Wee aged, or uh, Tyke aged, pardon me, but plays in uh, in Pee Wee. Uh, he's uh, capable of playing up in age group, and uh, so uh, we uh, we moved him up, and he's done quite a good job. To say he's um, quite a bit smaller than some of his teammates out there, but he's got uh, he's got some quick feet, and obviously some uh, good football knowledge. As uh, Campbell Toyota just runs this one right up the gut here, finally whistled dead after gaining a few yards. Looks like it might be close to a first down, and it looks like they are going to mark it. As a fresh set of downs here for Campbell Toyota. That was Trevor Booth that that ran that. They must they had their jumbo package in there and bring in the bring in the big boys and dive up the middle <laughs> and move the chains. 
say in a very effective play call. I mean, if you have some of those um, so some of those big kids in there that can move the pile, might as well take advantage of them, especially when you're so close to getting uh, that first down and uh, move that pile there a little bit closer. We've got about four players here in the backfield. As they hand it off to uh, Tyler Schumanski once again. Gains a few yards on that one. Looks like it'll be, uh, we'll make about five yards or so. It's a nice run. Very nice run. And that's some uh, great blocking in front of him there, able to uh, spring him loose for a few yards. This will be second down and five here for seem, Campbell Toyota. They seem to favor the right side of the offensive line. Uh, mm -hmm. Tyler's, uh, both the Tyler's run came around that right end. See four players back in the backfield once again on this one. Looks like they're going to go to the left side this time and move it around. Not quite as much success though on the left side. Looks like they still gained uh, a few, a few yards. We have just over four minutes left in the game here, and they really are. Or sorry, the four minutes, uh, four minutes left in the quarter. Thank you, Mr. Cralo. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, that wouldn't be the first time somebody in this booth got corrected by Mr. Cralo. Oh, he used to correct me in math class all the time, I can tell you that. <laughs> That's why I sat in the front row. <laughs> so really eating some time off the clock here. As they pass the ball off here, bounces out to the outside. And it looks like he's going to be just short of that goal line. Thought he was going to really make it in there. I think that was Everett Parker again, using that little burst of speed he's got and finding the seam. And uh, Johnny Cartier did a good job with the tackle, uh, keeping him out of the end zone. And say so it looked like he was going to spring it in there, no problem. And then all of a sudden, just brought down. But uh, did you get a fresh set of downs, first down here and goal for the Cougars? And looks like they're on the one yard line. So I think we might be seeing that uh, big man package <laughs> get put in once again. Try to punch it through, but um, you never know. Black Goose Grill, they've got some uh, some big guys there on their de defensive line. There's Cam Cam Cregan with the uh, ball again at quarterback. And he punches that one in for another six points. I think he, I think he looked up and saw Camden Fisher and uh, Braden Fields and Johnny Cartier looking straight across the line at him. I think he decided he better bounce that outside. Yeah, I wasn't going to be able to make it right up there in the middle as they... Uh, had that pretty much all clogged up. Yeah, didn't, didn't like his chances there. Definitely not, but he was able to bounce it outside and punch that through there um, relatively untouched. was able to stand up on <laughs> his two feet and uh, punch that in for another six points. This looks like they'll be uh, going to kick for, uh, for two points here. See a bit of a bad snap. As number 45 tries to uh, nice run tackle. with it, but unfortunately, no taken down. That was Ethan Joseph that uh, that made the tackle. Made it, it was a nice tackle. I'd say it was a very great tackle. He was uh, continued to pursue him even when he uh, tried to bounce it outside there, and uh, unfortunately, not able to convert that. As I say, the snap, not not the greatest. <laughs> and no, it kind uh, of bounced its way back there, didn't it? <laughs> And, um, you know, the, the first snap that they had on the first kick, on the first convert, was uh, not the greatest either, but at least bounced back a lot quicker <laughs> to the right. holder to get. This one kind of was a little slower for them. But, yeah, it uh, kind of dribbled its way back there. As uh, the Campbell Toyota Cougars take a 14-7 to lead over the Black Goose Grill Cougars here at the Chatham-Kent Community Athletic Complex. Just over two minutes left to play as Campbell Toyota will be kicking the ball off. Black Goose, uh, Goose Grill needs a good, uh, they really need a good return here. Get that ball up over midfield. Um, they're going to come up against the two-minute warning here very shortly. It's a pretty good kick here from Campbell Toyota. And one of the players from Black Goose Grill able to uh, fall on that. I think that was Liam Emerson that uh, covered that kick. Good thing he did because uh, Everett Parker was again 
right there to mm -hmm. uh, to uh, jump on it. Well, it was a, a good kick this time, so not able to get some uh, s a good field position here with uh, less than two minutes to play. As we've already hit the two-minute warning. As I start at the 40-yard line. We'll see what they can do, though, with uh, uh, less than two minutes to play. Maybe um, some, some more pass attempts here down the field. I'm going to guess this will be uh, Johnny Cartier to the outside. There he goes and bounces her out. Oh, nice. Nice job stutter stepping. Some great speed from him. Able to bounce it outside there. Yeah, he did, he did a great job. He stuttered, uh, stuttered just for a, a microsecond and threw Connor right off and uh, was able to bounce it outside. Mm -hmm. looked, like, looked like Connor had him contained and uh, could have got in and made the tackle. Johnny did a great job uh, getting around him. So you able to use that burst of speed to get to the outside there as we have a second down and a minute 22 to play here in the second quarter. As he takes the uh, it's quarterback, Jonathan Cartier keeps the ball. He eats up a lot of field space, able to get out of bounds there. Good enough for a first down and a huge gain of about 15 yards here. So a nice run from the Black Goose Grill Cougars. Yeah, they have just over a minute. Uh, they're going to need. They're going to need a big play. I think uh, they're going to need. Uh, they're going to need something of about 20 or 30 yards to to make sure they can find their way in. As the uh, Black Goose Girl Cougars come to the line of scrimmage, two players in the backfield here. And it looks like it's going to be a quarterback keeper here once again, but not able to bounce it out so much this time. As it looks like Jonathan Cartier took a shot to the face, and he's uh, out flat on his back right now. It looks, it looks like, like we have a timeout on the field. Looks like they... Uh, Went to the well maybe one one too many times with uh, Cartier. I think it's healthy to mix up the mix up the calling and keep the defense uh, on their toes. Um, you get to, you keep running the same kid. Uh, people just start to key on him, which is exactly what happened on that play. As I say they uh, did try to do it a little bit differently going to the left side this time. Unfortunately, not able to to get around there compared to uh, the last play where he gained for there had a gain of about 15 yards went to the right side so um, but you know what? they're almost expecting it now the uh, Campbell Toyota Cougars almost expecting sort of that play call. Uh, Connor Wright uh, played that textbook he he, uh, he didn't bite uh, he didn't commit he he boxed in and uh, was there to meet uh, Cartier when he came on the corner and he's, he's done that most of the game and, and you know that's how you contain a an outside running game is to make sure that uh, whoever's playing on the corner uh, stays on the corner and doesn't commit to the inside have some patience and uh, step in box in and uh, and meet to uh, meet the running back or quarterback in this case well we have uh, a minute seven left here in the uh, the first half second down with uh, 13 yards to go he lost three yards on that last play and it looks like another tackle for a loss here in the backfield as number 70, Isaiah Codwell brought down there pretty quickly, losing another five or so yards, and it'll be a third down and very long. It was Andrew Carroll that uh, made that tackle, did a good job shooting in from his uh, defensive end position. Is he able to get that uh, big tackle for a loss there in the backfield. So it looks like they're going to, trying to go back to Jonathan Cartier once again, but ran into one of his own players, and then one of the Campbell Toyota players able to get a hold of his leg there and bring him down. Whoever he hit, I think it was Isaiah Caldwell he ran into, he, uh, he sent, him, uh, sent him flying. As we have another timeout call by the Black Goose Grill Cougars. Take some time to talk, out as, talk this one out as it'll be a fourth and 18 with uh, under just under a minute left in the half here. Want to make sure that uh, even if you don't get the first down, you at least gain some good ground so you don't give Campbell Toyota a good uh, 
some good field position for a, maybe a shot at the end zone there. Yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, they need to move this ball uh, 20 yards downfield. It would be great if they could get the first down, but if they can't get the first down, they certainly got to move it 10 yards down. It just This would be a uh, opportune spot for Campbell Toyota to pick the ball from. I just... They need uh, they they, uh, they need uh, better field position. So we'll see here uh, exactly what they're going to do if they're going to go back to uh, Jonathan Cartier. Maybe try something different, mix things up here. We got two running backs in the backfield, and they are going back to Jonathan Cartier as he tries to bounce it out again. Oh, and he oh, cuts he's going to cut that back. And he cuts it back. Stops at the close end zone, heads towards the far end zone. Looks like he's got enough for a first down, and he is still on his feet there running before he's finally called out of bounds with a huge gain and a first down here for the Black Goose Grill Cougars. A very exciting run from the quarterback on the sneak, Jonathan Cartier. That's the big play they needed um, and a great way to uh, test the corners as to whether they're staying home is to reverse fields, and I, I think the... Uh, the left side of the uh, defense for Campbell Toyota chased the ball, and, and Cartier had a lot of open field. Yeah, once he reversed directions, I thought he was going to go out of bounds and then able to uh, to head back to the uh, to the right sideline. He did, he did a pretty good job uh, tiptoeing down the sidelines. I, th I thought he might have been out of bounds uh, 15 or 20 yards earlier, uh, but uh, did a great job straddling the sidelines and uh, picked up an extra 20 yards. We do have an injured player down here on the field, able to uh, to get back up as they walk him back to, uh, he's right by his own sideline there, so he didn't have to go too far. Let's see, it looks like it might be Connor Hines. Hard to read the numbers from the opposite side of the field here. But it looks like he's uh, he's up on his own power and doing well, so get back to, uh, to the game here with uh, just over 41 seconds left in the half. Black Goose Girl Cougars have the ball and are driving after that great run there by Jonathan Cartier. As they pass the ball off to one of the running backs this time, looking for a bit of a hole. And it looks like there is a flag on the play at this one, so we'll have to wait and see what the officials have to say about this. And Braden McFadden was the ball carrier. He's done a good job running the ball today. He's uh, carried the ball two or three times now and done a great job. So he looks like he's uh, he's not afraid to go right into uh, right into the thick of things. No, and he's a he's a returning football player. He's uh, Braden's played uh, two or three years now, so lots of experience. And unfortunately, though, for for him, it looks like it's going to be a holding call on the Black Goose Grill. Move the ball back ten yards, so it'll be first and twenty. And they'll replay that first down here. So. Black Goose digging themselves back into a hole here with uh, just over 30 seconds left in the half. <laughs> I, I love minor football. I can hear the coaches all the way over this side s screaming out uh, instructions. And Just trying to let them know where to go with uh, two players in the backfield. Hand the ball off here to uh, looks like and the ball is loose the ball's loose and it looks like Campbell Toyota has fallen on it Ethan jo Ethan Jordan picked that fumble up so it looks like it was going to be a pretty wow. good game there for a black goose grill and then all of a sudden the ball just popped out and what Campbell Toyota took advantage was was looking to be a pretty exciting end of the half mm-hmm yeah, it uh, looked like uh, Camden just lost the grip on the football and, and it, it bounced around on the ground there for a little bit before Ethan uh, Jordan fell on it. So Campbell Toyota taking their final timeout with 26.2 seconds left. They'll have the ball to, uh, to start here when we get back or after the timeout here. First and 10 with uh, a nice fumble recovery. I can't imagine they're going to do anything fancy here. No, I, I think it uh, <laughs> might just be sort of time to, to run out the clock. I mean, th with the field position where they are right now, kind of uh, deep in their own, and you don't want to risk fumbling the ball and uh, giving Black Goose a chance at uh, maybe running it back, tying up the score here. This is a good, this is a good time for maybe a quarterback sneak and just fall down. Mm -hmm. I think that might be uh, the safe call, too. You don't want to... Yeah. 
worry to either about uh, getting any of your players hurt as we head into the half. The Campbell Toyota team, they practice down at uh, McGregor. Uh, the high schools are very good to us um, here at CK, uh, at UCC, and at McGregor, and at WDSS. Uh, they do a great job. They allow us to use their fields. They host us. Say four running backs back there. we got a number of blockers here. And nice. a great gain by uh, number 12. It's Everett Parker again. A nice tackle by Camden Fisher. He sh looks like he sh shook the fumble off quickly and made a great stop there. Second and three as the clock is running. Looks like they'll get one more playoff here as we uh, head to the half. And they'll get one final playoff as uh, time has just expired. And a little quarterback sneak here by number 10. Uh, Ethan Jordan. As he bounces to the outside. They so got a first down on there. First down on that, uh, that run, but uh, unfortunately last play of the game, or last play of the half. And uh, as we uh, head to the halftime here, and the uh, Campbell Toyota Cougars up 14-7 on the Black and Skrill Cougars in the consolation final in the Pee Wee Age Division here. As we get ready here for the second half of the Pee Wee Constellation Final, the Campbell Toyota Cougars taking on the Black Goose Grill Cougars. As we start the second half, Campbell Toyota is up 14 to seven over Black Goose. As we start the second half here, and we should probably also mention the coaches of both teams. For Campbell Toyota, they're coached by Wayne Carroll, uh, Dean Cregan, also TJ Schramm, Denver Brown, and Sel Jordan. As we get the second half here underway, a good kick from Campbell Toyota. And Black Goose able to uh, at least fall on the ball here. It looks like they'll be uh, starting off where they uh, where they were started the last drive, around the 40-yard line. Also give them a chance to take that ball downfield and maybe tie this game up or take a lead. And put a little excitement in our, uh, in our afternoon. Yeah, I keep it a, a little closer as um, They've only had the ball a few times, or uh, have only had possession of the ball a few times, but unfortunately uh, the last possession resulted in a fumble, not able to put any points up on the board. So we'll see if they can uh, make up for that. They've able, been able to regroup here at the half, come back out strong. As they pass the ball off here. It's Connor Roebuck running the ball. And falls forward there for uh, a few yards. Con Connor's not the biggest kid on the field, but uh, he is, uh, he is a great defender. Wonder he has got a fabulous form on uh, tackling for him. And he, he takes kids down that are two and three times the size of him. Well, and, you know, and as a running back, it's probably hard to tackle the smallest guy on the field, right? It, it <laughs> is tough. And uh, you know what? He's, uh, he's, he's fearless and uh, will stick his nose in there and do what he needs to do. So Just have to wait till he hits that growth spurt, right? That's, yeah, that's correct. He's going to be unstoppable. Yeah, he'll be a monster. As uh, Black Goose heads to the line of scrimmage here. Two running backs in the backfield once again. Seems to be their standard set. As number three throws it up there and it's caught. Connor Roebuck throwing the ball as he gets, ta as he gets tackled there. I, I think that might be the first time I've seen him take a snap from center this year. And I uh, did a great job throwing that ball up for Johnny Cartier to jump up and grab it. Say so throwing it up, mixing it up a little bit. Usually you've got Johnny Cartier under center. This time you're putting Connor under center. Well, that's a good thing, and it's uh, we we do have a rule in the uh, in the league that uh, eight players on each team have to touch the ball twice from the line of scrimmage, and the, the center doesn't count. Um, uh, that it doesn't count on punts or even on uh, kicks. 
So uh, uh, any play from the line of scrimmage, uh, eight players have to touch the ball twice during the game. So we do that to spread the ball around. And it prevents uh, running the same kids over and over again mm -hmm. and uh, and gets more kids' experience. And, and, and this, you know, we're, we are about football fundamentals and you know, we'd like the kids to learn uh, all aspects of the game if possible. I'm going to say this is uh, the time, this is the age when they can do that here as we uh, have a penalty on the field on the field it looks like against Campbell Toyota so Black Goose Girl going to be taking advantage of that moving the chains looks like about 10 yards or so although I haven't heard exactly what the uh, the penalties for looks like the uh, the referees and umpires over talking a bit to the coaches explaining exactly what happened yeah Vic O'Leary and Mike Tatsu in quite a conversation over there Looks like we're ready to play again. So you mix up this time with a uh, bit of an empty backfield and now a bit of trickery here. <laughs> which uh, unfortunately didn't really work out. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Johnny uh, looked like he had, uh, Johnny Cartier looks like he had three, uh, three white shirts around his waist mm -hmm. and uh, was still standing in the middle he of them. He just couldn't move anywhere, unfortunately. He, he's a, and he's a big kid to take down. He's a tough kid to tackle. But uh, at least if you stop him from moving, the, hopefully uh, the officials will blow the whistle. And it looks like a loss here of about three or four yards. This will be second down and 14 for the Black Goose Grill Cougars, which can be a bit of a mouthful when you're trying to say that. It is tough. Mm -hmm. Say so with the handoff, we have a flag out in the field. Jonathan Cartier falls forward there. Returns it, uh, the ball getting back to about the line of scrimmage, but it looks like uh, they're going, the ball will be moving back. Looks like we have a penalty here on Black Goose Grill. One nice thing with the uh, the referees, they've been they've been fantastic again this year. Uh, they do have a quick whistle policy in minor football, um, and uh, it's it's really to prevent those second and third hits on ball carriers, mm -hmm. and uh, it keeps the kids safe. And that's a, a good example uh, on the uh, previous play when uh, when Johnny Cartier had a number of kids uh, wrapped around him. Uh, they didn't wait for him to to hit the turf. Uh, just call uh, it. <laughs> yeah, just call it and 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 move on. So which is like which is good. Well, it looks like here that they may have picked the flag up as it'll be uh, third down and ten. Not exactly sure what was uh, what was happening there. So we have just over nine minutes to play here in the third quarter. With the Campbell Toyota up 14-7 on Black Goose. But Black Goose is driving here, and we know that they can go for uh, some uh, some big yard gain and gains as we've seen them get 15 and 20 yards. So, um, you know, nothing's impossible. No, they're quite explosive. Oh, and it looks like we've got a flag here on the offside. Hard count able to draw Campbell Toyota off into the neutral zone. Yeah, it looked like, uh, it looked like uh, the defense jumped. It looked like Dryden Swayze jumped early. Pretty anxious to anxious to get in there. I'll say I wonder if maybe there was a bit of a hard count there to try to draw them off a bit. Yeah, there <laughs> get, might have been. You know, on third down here, try to get an extra five yards, and uh, so it'll be third and five now instead of third and ten. Makes it a little bit easier here. With just under nine minutes to play here in the third quarter. That may change their play call as well. A little shorter, shorter uh, distance to the sticks. They may uh, they may change their play call. See two running backs in the backfield as uh, they go back to throw it, and as it fall and it falls incomplete, as they were trying to Jonathan Cartier trying to get it to Nolan Johnson, reversing that uh, play pass that they had a little bit earlier, and unfortunately just. Um, I think the wind might have caught that I one and blown it back a bit. I, I think it did because uh, uh, Johnny Cartier doesn't miss many people with passes, and that ball ended up four feet the other side of Nolan Johnson. Well, there was a pretty big gust of wind there when that happened, and it just kind of blew it back uh, just, you know, just enough for so it was uh, out of his reach, unfortunately. So 
As we, uh, it looks like we have uh, an injured player down here on the field from Black Goose. It's Isaiah Caldwell. He looks like he's up and getting off the field on his own. He's just shaking up a little bit on that last play. Good to see him walk, being able to uh, walk off the field on his own power. It's a tough loss for them. He's uh, had a pretty good game, a few, a few nice rushes, some good blocks there too. So hopefully he's able to, uh, to shake it off and get back in. And it looks like uh, the Black Goose team, they're not very, uh, not super deep when it comes to players there. No, they had small numbers. They, they heavily recruited to, to get their numbers to 15. We play uh, 10 men on the field, 10 players on the field. And uh, they recruited uh, pretty heavy to get to 15, and I think they're carrying 14 with them today. Uh, they must have somebody, uh, somebody missing. I think uh, maybe Jeff Laline was uh, was not able to play today. I say it was a shotgun snap there, which unfortunately Jonathan Kurtz oh, nice dropped, but then able to pick it up and run with it. And looks like he's going to get the fr and he's going to get the first down here for Black Goose Grill. Yeah, that spin move, uh, I think, got him the first down. He, uh, right at the end, he, uh, he spun away from traffic, and I think that was a able to spring him. So, well, he is a hard, tough guy to tackle to bring down, especially in the open field when it's one-on-one. -on -one. You almost need two or three guys to, to try to bring him down. I, you do, and he's a, you know, he's a big kid, and he's got speed, and he's got power, and you just you have to contain him, get low, and uh, hope, hope that uh, help comes along to... Mm -hmm. To help put him on the ground. So first, uh, first and ten here. New set of downs for Black Goose Grill. Two running backs in the backfield here. With a bit with a pitch over here. It's number 34. Doesn't look like he's getting broke there for a little bit. Braden McFadden, but not able to uh, turn the corner there, unfortunately. Yeah, it looked pretty promising, but again, uh, you know, Connor Wright is playing that outside corner position and uh, he held his ground and and uh, really caused problems uh, as that play made its way around to the left side. Yeah, filled that hole up pretty quickly and uh, looks like they uh, actually lost a yard on that play so it'll be second and 11 here for Black Goose Grill. So I like though that they've uh, you know actually have gone to the air despite the uh, the windy conditions out here. Try to get a few few passing plays going on. I'm sure we'd see a little more if it wasn't quite as windy. Yeah, typically you'd see the ball thrown a little bit more. And I think Connor Roebuck's going to throw again. Wow. Two, uh, two completed passes in the game for him. A couple of flags here, though. Looks like Connor Roebuck, he'll, he, he was able to complete that pass, though, and then took a hit. So. We have Holy East of Black Goose Grill, which is a plenary signal. I think that's their third holding penalty this game. The one one thing with uh, lower numbers is uh, as the game goes on, you, you tend to get a little a little tired, mm -hmm. and it it does it does wear on you. Um, even with the uh, even with the field uh, narrower, um, it's still it's still a lot. A lot of these kids will have played uh, almost the whole game both ways. Uh, they'll pl have played a lot of the game both ways. To say, and then when you have players get hurt. You know, then yeah. you're down another body, which can be tough too. So absolutely, looks like it's going to be a second down and twenty here for Black Goose Grill, digging themselves into a, a little bit of a hole, and we'll see if they can uh, slowly start to to work their way out of it. And say, yeah, you can probably you can tell a, a little bit that they're getting tired because the first half, not too many penalties. Now we're seeing a lot more now here in the second half. Uh, Johnny's going to pull that ball down and run with it. Oh. He saw that seam. Oh, and he's breaking loose here. Broke right through. He's only it. got one left in, and he is going to go all the way down for a touchdown for the Black Goose Grill Cougars. No penalties, no flags on the play, so it looks like that one is going to stand. Wow, 51 yards. Yeah, he, pull, he pulled that ball down, and, and uh, you could see he saw the seam, and he cut back and uh, was, uh, was gone. And once he got out into the open field there, you could really see his speed kick open and yeah, just nobody able to, uh, to punch it in. Yeah, nobody was catching him. <laughs> no, that's for sure. So a nice run there as uh, Black Goose 
Grilled Cougars looking like they were um, struggling there for a minute to even just get the uh, the first down and then able to, to go all the way as uh, Jonathan Cartier wanted to throw, but not able to. And then, you know what, I think he made a, a better choice as it uh, looks like they'll be uh, going for two points here, or sorry, rather for one. The officials finally whistle this one the dead. No good. The score is Campbell to Oda 14, Black Goose Grill 13. So unable to uh, uh, to tie it up there. I see we're going for uh, the extra point, and that unfortunately stopped. So now down by one, so the uh, Black Goose Grill Cougars trail the Campbell Toyota Cougars 14-13 with just over five minutes to play here in the third quarter. So a very exciting, uh, very exciting drive there for Black Goose Grill. Very much so. Even the uh, even the convert was pretty exciting. They, they were trying their best to push Camden Fisher over the goal line, and there must have been four or five uh, Campbell Toyota defenders on the other side pushing the other way. That um, that uh, if that's uh, the difference in the game, that uh, it's about a half a yard that he missed that convert on. I say which can be tough, but. Uh, hopefully it doesn't come to that. We still have uh, another just over five minutes to play in this quarter and then uh, a whole another fourth quarter to play. So we'll see how it goes as Black Goose Grill gets ready to kick off here. Looks like they're having a little bit of trouble getting the football to stay on the tee in the wind. The uh, Black Goose Grill they very easily could have been playing in the next game uh, in our championship game. Uh, they, uh, they, they effectively uh, lost by a convert on uh, Wednesday night and it was pretty it was pretty heartbreaking it was uh, it was tough for them they bought each team had scored two touchdowns but uh, Remax was able to convert one of their touchdowns and and that was the difference in the game so a chance for them to uh, try to redeem themselves here although they are trailing by one point again with the, the failed convert there but uh, you never know maybe if their uh, their defense can make a stop or get a fumble anything can happen <laughs> anything can happen as Black Goose prepares to kick off here. And a pretty good kick on this one as it takes uh, a bounce for the uh, sideline. But Campbell Toyota able to uh, to fall on that one. Number 47, Cameron Cregan falling on that one. So not too many runbacks here though on the kickoffs, but more of a just try to keep the ball in your possession. <laughs> I, I think when you're kicking east to west, it's uh, the wind really is playing havoc with the ball. And I think uh, they're also trying, you know, they're trying to keep it away from some players. Um, I think uh, Campbell Toyota very clearly is not trying to kick the ball to Johnny Cartier. And I think uh, the same that uh, Black Grease Grill is uh, trying to keep it away from uh, Connor Wright and uh, Everett Parker. Well, as we uh, head back to the line of scrimmage here, Campbell Toyota, four players in the backfield, and they run this one right up the gut. For a good gain, looks like they're going to get about eight yards on this one. It's a nice, nice dive play and a great job by the offensive line opening that hole. Did a wonderful job up front. See, it looked like that was uh, number 42, Connor Wright, with that uh, great drive right up the middle there. Yeah, some of these kids are they're young, uh, pretty impressive though. And uh, when Connor hit the pile, he just kept his legs pumping and uh, probably picked up another three yards. See, so as they uh, hand this one off to uh, number 14, Connor Van Heesh. Say, so, uh, and you know, having the, those four running backs back there really sort of gives them that advantage of you never quite know who's going to get the ball and which way they're going to go. Yeah. It's a it's a great little system because it, yeah you don't know who gets the ball and uh, the ball kind of hides and uh, you've got three blockers in motion uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they can pick off uh, players on the corner so it's a pretty good uh, pretty effective way to uh, to do minor football. Say so as we have a, a player down here right at about midfield. I think that's uh, Connor Van Heesh that might be uh, that might be down. Um, He's brand new to our program. This is his first year playing football, and he has done a great job. Um, you know, big athletic kid, um, but has really, uh, really flourished in uh, in minor football and done a done a fabulous job for Campbell Toyota. They're quite excited about him, 
and uh, and they talk a lot about him. A, a good uh, good lad to coach. So yeah, as the officials bring uh, the sticks out here to measure for the first down. And it is a first down for Campbell Toyota, just barely getting that one as they had to go out and measure. So hopefully Connor Van, Van Heesh is able to, uh, to come back out and uh, play again, maybe catch his breath. Yeah, it looks like maybe just maybe got the wind knocked out of him. That can, uh, I can imagine that can easily happen if you're at the bottom of one of those piles with a lot of kids on top of you. Yeah, it, do it doesn't have to be a shoulder pad or a helmet. Sometimes it can just be the ball. Sometimes just falling on the ball will do mm -hmm. it for you. As uh, Campbell Toyota heads back up to the line of scrimmage here. Looks like this time they've got just two players in the backfield. Oh, maybe three. As they try to figure out what they're going to do here. Two players out wide. As they pass it up. Going right up the middle this time, not quite getting, maybe falling forward for about a yard gain there. It looked like Cameron Cregan was uh, was the player with the ball there. Not quite as effective there without the the four players in the back because you don't have as many quite as many blockers there. Yeah. Uh, for the running backs, but still able to uh, to fall forward there for it looks like about maybe a yard. Yeah, still to get some positive yardage. And this time it's a bit of a quarterback sneak here as number 10 was running out <laughs> all the way to the, the Ethan Jordan running all the way out to the far sideline, able to pick up the first down there. Well, that was probably a, a smart move on Ethan's part. He had, uh, he had Jonathan Cartier uh, chasing him. Uh, pretty hard on the sideline, so. Rather than get tackled, just <laughs> book it for the sideline, but uh, still able to, uh, smart enough to get the first down. Well, it's a good way to hang on to the ball, too. Mm -hmm. So he just, uh, he looked, he looked to this, he looked to the right, and then he just took off to the left, so worked out well for him there as they get a first down. Just over a minute 30 to play here in the third quarter. Campbell Toyota up 14-13 on Black Goose Grill. Up by one point, and they're driving now. As they hand the ball off, number of blockers out front here, giving them some space. Great tackle. Fantastic tackle there by Black Goose Grill. That was Connor Roebuck. Did a wonderful job. If uh, Had he uh, not made that tackle, um, that play would have went a long way. It looks like a gain of about four yards, three or four yards there. But definitely stopping him from uh, breaking that one open for at least a first down, if not even more down the end there, because he had some uh, some blockers out there helping him, but just able to sneak in and get that tackle. So as they go to the other side this time, one tackler missing, but the second one able to bring him down there as they get to out of bounds, Jonathan Cartier on that one. Uh, Liam Emerson did great. Uh, he penetrated and uh, and uh, just hesitated that play enough. The rest of his uh, defense could catch up, and Cartier forced him out of bounds. See, it looked like he uh, he almost had them for a tackle for a loss there in the backfield, but behind the line of scrimmage, but almost, not quite. And, and that's a big play that Black Goose needs. They need to they need a stop here. They need to uh, they need a tackle in the backfield. Some negative yardage and uh, to the end of the third quarter here. We'll get one more play off as it's a uh, third and four yards to go for Campbell Toyota. Head to the line of scrimmage. Just two running backs in the backfield this time. Two players out wide on either side. As they pass this one off or hand this one off rather. At the end of the third quarter, the it looks like they'll be close to a first down. Black group, black just short, sure. just short on this one here as we uh, end the the third quarter. Looks like it'll be fourth and one like when we start the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter fourth and one. That looked like Bennett Brown was the ball carrier there. They've, uh, they've done a good job uh, both sides of the ball, spreading the ball around, uh, having kids play different positions. Uh, it's uh, it's been really good. It's uh, exactly what you would like to see out of minor football. So it might be one of the advantages of playing on a, a not a, sm a smaller team that you, you get to be out there a lot. <laughs> there, there is an advantage. Uh, these kids on the Black Goose Grill uh, are, are going to have seen a lot of football this year, uh, both sides of the ball. 
and I think that is helpful. Um, when we started the program uh, five years ago, some of our teams were 28, 30 kids, and a lot of kids, I mean, you, you effectively you played one way, and you got to learn offense or you got to learn defense. Some coaches would uh, flip them around uh, first half, second half, but um, but you really only got to, to play one way. And the, the benefit of smaller teams is the kids get a lot of football experience. Yeah, so rather than have, you know, 30 kids on one team, you split them up into two teams of 15 and get a lot more playing time and... Yeah, the kids get more playing time, more exposure, more experience. You know, you can decide if you want to play offense or defense after after a few years of playing both ways. Yeah, soon enough you'll be uh, you'll have a position, and uh, and there you'll uh, you know you'll largely uh, stay either offense uh, and or defense. But uh, yeah, this way the kids get a chance to experience a lot. So it looks like a little bit of confusion here as it's uh, fourth and one for Campbell Toyota. Looks like they uh, are going to have a quarterback sneak here. And it looks like they're going to get it. First down here. S just sneaking that one through there. And a fresh set of downs here for Campbell Toyota. The middle of the uh, Campbell Toyota line has done a really good job all game. Uh, Jared Fiala. Uh, Bennett Brown have uh, both done a good job on the inside. Um, they just they've got a good push. Uh, they've uh, moved the ball forward, and uh, you know they've run a lot of dive plays. And uh, the only way you can have success doing that is if your offensive line blocks. Says so we have a few flags on this one. Looks like a couple of players moved a little early. It never fails as soon as as soon as you compliment the offensive line, they uh, <laughs> they jump uh, early. And it looks like that one will be on Campbell Toyota, so they'll be uh, moving back five yards. It'll be first down and 15. Which is uh, kind of exactly what Black Goose Grill needs, though. They need to, you know, take take advantage of this, try to uh, get a big stop here. They do. This is a this this is a big play for Black Goose Grill. This uh, this uh, this this play in particular, if they can stop them and hold them at second and 15, that would be. Uh, that would be great. Say a bit of a fumbled snap here. His number 10's running around trying to, to make something of this one and doesn't look like it's gonna do anything. Ethan Jordan scrambling there. Looked like he fumbled the snap, but able to recover it. But uh, unfortunately had to sort of scrap whatever play was called and looks like uh, lost another two yards or so as it'll be a second and about 16. And that's a, and that's a defensive stand that uh, that uh, Black Goose needed. That, uh, that that'll help them. Uh, they need to do this one more time and see if they can't get that ball turned over and and uh, take advantage of it. It's Campbell Toyota heads to the line of scrimmage. They got their regular four back set. Hand it off to uh, number seven. Bounces it to the outside there. Getting uh, a good gain there as uh, Tyler Shemansky having a good run to the right side. He did a great job sliding out to the outside, and uh, he just uh, just seemed to be able to find a seam in between everybody and, and keep bouncing it. Say not enough for the first down, but uh, definitely helping out with some gains as they're uh, back to about uh, third down and six. Black Goose Girl will be uh, looking to try to put an end to this to this rally here as they push forward trying to get a first down. Still haven't really found a solution for that four back set on Campbell Toyota keeps running on them. As they uh, yeah. go back to that four back set once again. Hand it off to number 14. There's Van Heesh with the ball. Oh, he broke. Uh, all of a sudden, popped out of that pile there. Yeah, he broke some, uh, he broke some tackles, and uh, somehow managed to keep going. I thought he was, uh, I thought he was stopped. I thought he was too, and all of a sudden, uh, I looked down at my, uh, my player roster, looked back up, and all of a sudden he's back up again. <laughs> and uh, good enough for the first down, just short of the, uh, the goal line. Giving them a fresh set of downs though, and an opportunity to, uh, to try to score here and. 
Uh, really almost sort of put this game out of reach as there's uh, just over eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. First down, they've uh, got about five yards to go before they hit the end zone. So we'll see how uh, Black Goose Girl is able to, uh, to put up a defensive stand here as they try to go right up the gut here from Campbell Toyota. Uh. They'll be stopped just short, though, of the end zone. Ran another dive. It looks like that was to Connor Wright again. See, uh, got some good gains. Looks like they're just short of the goal line. So to be second down in inches. Well, history would say that Cameron Cregan is going to line up under the center and uh, punch this in. Looks like they're going to try do it a little different this time. Ethan Jordan is uh, is lined up a quarterback. And there's the touchdown. And it looks like they did uh, hand it off to Cameron Cregan, although it was a little bit of a different formation. As another six points goes up on the board. And Campbell Toyota jumps out to a 20 to 13 lead, pending the uh, extra point here. See if they try to kick it again or maybe run it in this time. Well, this is an interesting decision for them. If they kick it and they're successful, it's a nine-point game. And if they run it in and successful, that would make Black Goose Grill have to kick their, kick their convert. It looks like they're setting up for a kick here. See if we're able to get the snap off this time. We've had trouble in the last two times. Able to get it down, but unfortunately it's uh, blocked. Yards, the score is Campbell Joy 20, Black Goose Grill 13, 7.03 left in the game. So unsuccessful on the convert there. Tempted it, but unfortunately just blocked. Not able to make its way through. So Campbell Toyota is up 2013 on the Black Goose Grill Cougars. Just over seven minutes to play here in the fourth quarter, and we'll see if uh, the Black Goose Girl Cougars can, um, you know, take advantage of this. So I guess we should discuss this, though. If uh, they do tie it up, what happens at oh, the end I, of regulation? Yeah, I think in the consolation final, we'll we'll end it a draw. Um, uh, in the championship final, we'll, uh, we would play overtime. Uh, but I think uh, this is the first of four games today. So we're, uh, I think in the consolation finals, we'll, uh, we'll end it a draw. Both teams, sh both teams should be happy with that. See a great kick here from the Black Goose Girl Cougars. Unfortunately, going out of bounds. Kick off went out of bounds. So uh, Black Goose not able Black to uh, Goose recover Goose that. But it looks like they'll get some for pretty good field position, um, just shy of the 50-yard line. I, s I still like the idea of making them kick it again. You just want them to have all the practice they can get, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, I think it, if I'm a Black Goose girl, I'd want them to. I'd want them to re-kick it. They just have, you know, they have some explosive players on that team that uh, that could even turn a ball that uh, goes to the edge of the edge of the f towards the edge of the field. They could turn that into a long, long gain. Well, we'll see what Black Goose Girl can do with the ball this time. Just under seven minutes left to play now. First and ten for them. Pretty good field position. See if they're able to uh, take some big chunks out of the field. But, uh, of course, they've had some trouble holding on to the ball. So we'll see if they're able to uh, continue, um, you know, can have some good ball security here in the fourth quarter. They're going to need they're, they're going to need some big plays here, too, with uh, six and a half minutes left. Um, they, they can't really afford to go three downs to make a first down every time. Say so it looks like the quarterback tackled before he even had an opportunity to hand the ball off. Number 66, Jonathan Cartier. And that was Andrew Carroll with the, with the sack. So I don't even think he saw that tackle coming. Uh, he was no. turned around looking for uh, who to hand it off to, and then all of a sudden he's down. He was quite surprised. <laughs> I think that ball was going to Camden Fisher again. And just the play just took a little bit of time to to develop. So a loss of two yards on that play. So it'll be second and 12 here. Just under six minutes to play in the fourth quarter. 
Great defense from Campbell Toyota as they try to uh, hold on to their, their lead here. As they hand the ball off. Looks like they're able to get back to at least the original line of scrimmage on that one, but not much else. Yeah, it's tough, you know, this late in the game uh, with uh, 14 players, it's pretty tough running that ball up the middle. The offensive line is, has been, on, they've been on the field quite a bit today and uh, they must be getting tired. So I would, uh, uh, dive plays are pretty tough. I, I think they'll find their success on the outside. See, that's where they uh, had some success before is some, uh, some broken plays as they run around. And it looks like that's what they're going back to, trying to jump it to the outside. Say so falling forward close to the first down marker. Looks like he uh, gamed about eight yards on that one. That'd be uh, quarterback Jonathan Cartier. That was, a, that was a good run. It looked like he was uh, going to be shut back into the middle again. And mm -hmm. uh, he again, he, you know, he found a way to make a cut on the sideline and stay in bounds and take the ball down the field. So it'll be fourth down and two yards to go on this one. We'll see if the Black Goose Girl Cougars are able to capitalize. Just over four minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Campbell Toyota up 20 to 13 over Black Goose Girl. Black Goose currently driving. I would look for uh, I would look for Johnny Cartier to grab the ball and and uh, take it himself. You say, and that looks like what he's going to do. Going to bounce it oh, out to the nice right side move. here. It Gets the first down, breaks a couple of tackles, and gains it looks like uh, about 12 yards on that rushing play there. At the end of it, he did he did a great job cutting that ball back inside. It looked like he was going to be stopped. Uh, I thought Connor Wright. Uh, Positionally played it very well, and uh, and he for he was not going to give him the outside. He forced him back inside, and uh, Cartier made a great cut to uh, to force that ball inside. So he broke a couple of tackles there too, able to get a even after the first down, get a few more yards. He, he's a tough, there. tough, tough kid to bring down, and you know usually one kid doesn't bring him down. So uh, for those that were hanging on, they were certainly looking for some help. So first and ten at the 40-yard line even though the uh, marker just blew over to second down. Say, and the officials throwing out a flag here. Not quite sure. Someone may have been lined up in the uh, neutral zone. So it looks like Black Goose Grill's offensive line just sort of lined up in the uh, neutral zone there. Official calling them on that, so they'll have to uh, be first and 15. That's a tough. That's a tough call. They, um, with uh, three minutes left in the game, they just they just cannot afford negative uh, yardage like that. They really got to keep marching this ball towards the goal line. Yeah, they, they're, they're still 45 yards away from the mm -hmm. end zone. It doesn't help when uh, you keep going back five yards every once in a while here with these. Uh and the ball is loose. The ball is loose. Not sure who is on that. It's Jonathan Cartier handed the ball off. And Campbell Toyota comes up with the ball on that fumble. It looked like Cole Hitchcock that, that uh, got on that ball and uh, pop, popped it out. So it almost looked like um, Campbell Toyota just kind of fell on the ball. It kind of got lucked out on that one, but yeah. <laughs> just over two minutes to play, they'll take it as uh, they try to preserve that uh, small lead that they have here. F from up here, it looked like he gathered it in with his back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the, it looked like he got tackled onto the ball and just kind of got lucky there. So, uh, he, But you know what, though? I'm pretty sure that uh, Campbell Toyota's coaches will take it. And... Uh, Fortunately for Black Goose, they're now back on defense here as they uh, hope for uh, maybe a, a similar kind of situation so that they can get the ball and at least try to try to tie this game up here. Well, they're going to need to try and punch this ball out. I think they're going straight after the ball. Say so we have a flag on the field here. A good run, though, as uh, 
<laughs> As one Kim came flying in from Black Goose to uh, tackle the runner on that one. Looked like uh, number 10, Ethan Jordan. Looked like Tate O'Leary went straight over the top to, to make try and make that tackle. But it looks like this one will be coming back as a holding call on Campbell Toyota will bring this ball, nullifying that play and bringing it back another 10 yards. So a bit of a break for Black Goose Grill as we have a, a minute 25 left here in the fourth quarter. Campbell Toyota leaving Black Goose Grill 20 to 13. So it'll be first and 20 here for Campbell Toyota. We got our two minute warning. Give that ball to Shemansky. Say in a great run by him. As he gets the first down there, going for about 25 yards on that run. Did a fabulous job running the ball. And again, he's he is uh, of tight gauge. And he was a player we moved up this year to play Pee Wee. We thought he could physically uh, physically do it and then was mature enough to do that. And he's played really well uh, in this game. And uh, he did uh, on Wednesday night as well. I say, uh, not only, I think he's uh, excelled playing up at uh, at the Pee Wee age group, doing a great job there on that run. He really has. team a first down. And, uh, you know, it's, it just goes to show that uh, four running backs set there, it's uh, almost unstoppable when you get some good blockers as they uh, head back to that one again. Looks like number 14 Indeed. spinning out of a few tackles there <laughs> as he falls forward. They're yeah. trying very hard to rip that ball out. They are. They're going after the ball, and that's what you need to do now as we have uh, under a minute to play, fi just over 51 seconds left in this game. And that was uh, a fantastic run, though, by Campbell Toyota. Looks like a gain of about uh, eight yards or so. We'll see exactly where they mark it. So it'll be about uh, second down and uh, two or three yards to go here. They pass it off. Go right up the gut this time. And the pile finally falls forward there. But the w of course, the uh, the play was whistled de dead there a little bit earlier. Which, as you said, the refs are, you know, we want them to be quick on those whistles so uh, nobody gets hurt here yeah, early on. I think his, his forward progress was just about stopped. And I think at the end at end of a game, and it's been it's been a long game, uh, we try to get our try to get these uh, football games over in uh, in about an hour and 20 minutes so uh, we're about an hour and hour and 33 minutes now at the it's been a long game for these kids so they're getting tired and you know hats off to Mike Tatsu and Jeff Green and Jeff Shepard that are refereeing today for blowing the whistle earlier and and keeping them safe well, and speaking of being tired, Black Goose Girl just taking a, a timeout here to give their uh, kids a bit of a breather here on defense with uh, 39.7 seconds left here in the fourth quarter, so uh, not very much time left in the game. Campbell Toyota is leading Black Goose Girl 20-13, and Campbell Toyota having the ball right now. Looks like uh, they might actually end up, as long as they can hold on to the ball here, it looks like they have a pretty good opportunity to uh, hold on to this win here and win this Constellation Pee Wee final. Yeah, they just if they can hold on to the ball, I agree they can run the clock out and we'll be in a great uh, great spot. I think uh, in my mind nobody really is a is a loser in this game. I think they've been, both played extremely well. And uh, except for a break here or there this game could be could be tied or or uh, Black Goose Grill could be out in front. But they've uh, they've both played excellent football. And um, and you know they've played within our rules as well, which uh, which is always uh, which excites me. That's mm -hmm. always good. Lots of kids touching the ball. We've lots of kids at positions they've never played before, um, which uh, which is great. Getting an opportunity. Um, the one that stands out to me is uh, Connor Roebuck, uh, getting a chance to throw the ball. And uh, I I have not seen that uh, pretty much all year. So. Um, you know what, in a game like this, uh, it's, uh, hats off to Vic O'Leary for, for trying some new things and giving some kids some exposure. 
Yeah, the coaches for uh, Black Goose Girl, Vic O'Leary, PJ Johnston, Andrew Caldwell, Mark Childs, and Elizabeth Fisher. You're one of your only, your first female coach here in the Cougar system. As uh, we have 31.7 seconds left, and you know they've done a great job with uh, the kids that they have here. Have some talented players to work with, and like you said too, with uh, a few breaks here or there, you know it could have been a completely different ball game. No, agreed. I, uh, the uh, Campbell Toyota coaching staff's done a good job this year as well. Um, Wayne Carroll and uh, Dean Cregan, uh, Denver Brown, Sel Jordan, uh, Jim DeLine's been helping them as well. It's been a, a really good, uh, really good football year. And uh, last year, um, this uh, this team, half of the team anyway, uh, didn't win a game all season. Uh, it was a tough year for them. They had a lot of new football players, and this year they've. Uh, you know they've done a good job uh, uh, we've got some experience under their belt and a lot of the kids that were new to the game last year are, are uh, coming out and using the knowledge that they've gained and and uh, and it's showing uh, they're doing a good job mm -hmm. Campbell Toyota just sort of uh, pushing it up the gut there once again just over 25 seconds left to play here in the game and it looks like uh, Campbell Toyota might try to uh, run the clock out a little bit here as much as possible before they uh, take a snap. Yeah, they might get one more play in and and uh, and that's about it. Maybe do a, another quarterback sneak, do something safe. And that's the end of the game. And Campbell Toyota, the Campbell Toyota Cougars coming out on top in the Pee Wee Consolation final, beating the Black Goose Grill Cougars. 20 to 13, a very exciting game here today. Any final thoughts? Uh, no, just uh, when I watch these guys, uh, when I watch these kids play, it just uh, really makes uh, makes us proud in the Cougar organization of uh, of our football product. Um, not just uh, not just how they tackle and block, but uh, the sportsmanship that they have and and uh, and how they play the game and how the game's coached. Uh, they just both teams did a great job today, so we, uh, as an organization, just really couldn't be happier. Okay, fantastic game here in the uh, Constellation Final. And in the end, it was Campbell Toyota coming out on top of the Black Goose Grill, 20-13. And uh, a fantastic game as we have the, uh, the final coming up in uh, just a few moments.